In the last video, we talked about generating MACAS keys and pattern fingerprints from the SMILES notations of molecules using RDKit. Today, we will talk about generating Morgan fingerprints and extended connectivity circular fingerprints using RDKit. So again, let me just go ahead and install RDKit and all the various libraries which we need. After that, I'm going to be importing an Excel file containing SMILES notations of 14 molecules. So let's just run this and see the data set. So this data set contains 14 molecules and the SMILES notations. Now, again, if we want to generate fingerprints using RDKit, we need to first convert the SMILES notations to molecular objects, which we can easily do with this code here. So you can see here that we now have a column called mole which contains these molecular structures. So now let, let's just go ahead and see how we can generate Morgan fingerprint. So again, we will just create an empty list here, followed by iterating through each molecule. First, it will generate a bit vector and we will convert this bit vector into NumPy arrays and then append it to this empty list. And in the end, we will have a list containing 14 different arrays because we have 14 molecules in a data set and we will just convert it into a data frame and, and append it to our original data set so that we have Morgan fingerprint corresponding to each smiles. Now, the Morgan fingerprint is different from other fingerprints um, in a manner that we have the flexibility of choosing radius and length of bits. Now, n bits here is intuitive and refers to the number of bits here and you can have 512, 1024 or 2048 bits. The concept of radius can be a little bit tricky to understand. In the context of Morgan fingerprints, the term radius refers to the distance from a central atom to neighboring atoms when generating circular substructures. The significance of the radius in Morgan fingerprints lies in the level of detail and context captured in the generated fingerprints. So this concept can be explained with the example of N-methylpyrrole, which is the first molecule in a data set. Since this fingerprint takes into account the neighborhood of each atom, let's say if we have radius 1, then it will capture the information of the atoms which are one bond apart. So basically, it will capture the details of these two CH and CH3. Whereas if the radius is 2, the algorithm will consider circular substructures that extend up to two bonds away from the central atom. This include the immediate neighbors, which are these two CH and CH3, and their neighbors. So these two CH will also be included if radius is equal to two. Now smaller radii capture more local information, focusing on the immediate neighborhood of each atom. This includes capturing specific functional groups and short range connectivity. Larger radii, on the other hand, capture more global information by considering atoms that are farther away from the central atom. This can capture long range connectivity patterns and more extended structural features. Choosing an appropriate radius allows you to control the sensitivity of the fingerprint to different levels of molecular context. Smaller radii may capture more fine grained details while larger radii capture more holistic structural information. So let's just go ahead and run this code and see how the output looks like. So mf.head would provide us the details of first five molecules. So we have the smile strings with molecular objects along with their Morgan fingerprint. Since the input is 2048 bits, so we have got the length equal to 2048. If we change it to 512, it will provide us the fingerprint with length equal to 512. So uh, just if you want to compare the fingerprint of any two molecules, you can just run a simple code here. So what I have done here is that printed the first molecule in a data set, followed by generating the number of ones and zeros in the first molecule. In the end, I have grabbed the column names where bits are ones. So I have done that for first as well as second molecules in a data set. So let's just run this code. So you can see here, this is N-methylpyrrole, the first molecule. And number of ones in N-methylpyrrole are seven and the rest are zeros. And these are the locations or 
column names where we have ones and the, and the rest of the columns contain zeros. In case of simple by roll, we have number of ones equal to five. And if you want to compare the positions of ones, there are some similarities like at 64, 121 and 337 positions, we have ones in both the molecules while the rest of the positions are different. So moving on to our next topic, which is extended connectivity circle fingerprint. Uh, the code is pretty much similar. In fact, we are using the same dot get Morgan fingerprint as bit vector command here as we have used in case of Morgan fingerprint. Now, the only difference is that when we have radius two or more, we just call this as extended connectivity circular fingerprint. Now, let's just run this code. And you can see here we have got the data frame with ECFB fingerprint and the length is equal to our input, which is 2048. Now, if you want to compare again the fingerprint of any two molecules, you, you can run the same code here. And you can compare the uh, differences in these two structures. So let me just go ahead and show you how the ECFP fingerprints are different than Morgan fingerprint. Now let me just run the Morgan fingerprint code here with the number of bits equal to 2048 so that we have the right comparison. Now this is the information about first two molecules for Morgan fingerprint. For n methyl pyrrole, we have number of ones equal to seven, and these are the positions where we have ones. Whereas in ECFPs, for the first molecule, we have number of ones equal to ten. And to get deep into that, you can also compare the positions of uh, the ones in ECFP to that of Morgan fingerprint. So that is it for now. In the next video, we'll be talking about some more fingerprints. The code for this lecture has been provided in the description. Thank you for listening.